Hey, what's up guys? Today I am going to walk you through that process of baking the uh, Photoshop Illustrated pizza that we made in class earlier. Um, so I'm just starting off here with a uh, 2000 by 2000 pixel document in Photoshop. Um, so when I create a new document, you just want to make sure that says 2000, 2000, and pixels. Make sure it does not say inches here. Uh, the resolution doesn't make any difference at this point. Um, so a couple of things to keep in mind. I want to make sure that every time I am using my brush tool, that I have the hardness on my brush set all the way to 100%. The techniques that we're going to use will not work if you have your hardness set to uh, anything lower than 100. Okay. Uh, secondly, you want to make sure that you create a new layer for each layer of your pizza and that you do not draw anything on the background layer. So let's get started. Here's my layer one. Uh, I'm going to make my brush just, uh, just a little bit smaller than the whole uh, document with just a little bit of blank space around it. That should be fine. Uh, and again, the hardness should be set to 100%. Uh, you can access that uh, hardness setting uh, either up here on your option bar um, or by right clicking or clicking with two fingers um, on your trackpad. So around uh, uh, 1800 or so is uh, a good size for my pizza crust in this case. Um, so for my colors, I'm going to pick a color that is um, appropriate for a pizza crust somewhere in that neighborhood. Should be good. Um, so here are my layers and uh, I'm going to create a new layer for my crust just like that. If you want to name it, feel free. Go ahead and give it a name uh, just by double clicking the name and there you have it. So new layer again for my sauce. Um, in this case, I'm going to pick a color from up here in swatches. Something like that is good for my sauce. Um, I have a separate layer for the, um, get rid of my, there we go. So I have a separate layer here for my sauce. I'm just going to make my brush a little bit smaller. And there is my sauce layer. Okay. Uh, if you're unhappy with the positioning of it, you can use your move tool here, shortcut V, and you can uh, place it and make sure it's exactly in the center, like so. Um, make another new layer. This one I'm going to use, uh, or I'm going to, um, this will be my cheese layer. Uh, again, slightly smaller than the sauce layer. There's my cheese layer. Uh, if you want to name these layers, you totally can. Up to you doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to go a slightly more yellowish color here for my cheese. Like that. There we go. Uh, one more layer. This one is for my pepperoni. I'm going to use this color right here. Um, these are swatches I used earlier. If you want to pick an, any other color, you can click on the color picker over here on the side and get exactly the color that you want. Uh, or use the color palette up here at the top. Doesn't really matter. Uh, when you draw the pepperoni, you need a uh, little bit of care here to make sure, number one, that it looks sufficiently random and that you like your placement. Uh, but you also don't want to have any pepperonis like this that are overlapping each other. So you just want to make sure that uh, each pepperoni kind of lives in its own space, like so. Um, not exactly even, but you know, hey, good enough. Uh, if you end up not liking one that you make, you can always use your eraser and erase it if you like. Okay, um, so there we go. Uh, next, uh, this doesn't exactly look particularly realistic at this point, so I'm going to go ahead and rough up the edges a little bit. These circles here are just way too perfect, so I'm going to use my eraser tool. I'm going to go all the way around the edge, uh, just sort of make that edge look a little bit more natural. Uh, cheese on a pizza would never be just a perfect circle like that. Um, doesn't really matter how you do this. There's not really a wrong way. Uh, but I like to make sure that I don't have any uh, remaining pieces of that circle that are just perfectly round because that makes it look a little bit unnatural. <clears throat> 
Uh, next, I'm going to do the same thing, exact thing on the sauce. There are other ways to do this. Um, I like using the eraser. Again, make sure the hardness is at 100%. Um, you could try using the smudge tool or other things, but uh, you want to make sure that you get these nice, perfect, crisp edges for the next step that we're doing. And there you have it. Okay, so now that I've got my edges looking a little bit more natural, um, I don't really like this right here. I'm gonna make sure that I can uh, fix that. Uh, fun little trick here, if you're using the brush tool and you wanna pick up a color that you've used previously, if you hold the option key on your keyboard and click on a color, it'll pick up that exact color so that you can use it elsewhere in your illustration. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna work on is the uh, 3D effects of all the different layers. Um, very simply, all I have to do is double click on the layer. That pops up the layer style box. Uh, the layer styles, I'm going to use the exact same layer styles on all the layers. They all have a slightly different application. Um, in, in other words, I'm going to change the settings just a little bit on all of them, but they're all going to use the same basic uh, layer styles, and that is the drop shadow, the bevel and emboss, and the pattern overlay. So one at a time. This is the drop shadow. Um, the Zoom in a little bit here so you can really see the effect. Uh, the drop shadow effect, uh, as you can see there, let's turn this down, uh, the drop shadow creates the effect that, the, that a light is shining down and casting a shadow onto the underlying layers. Um, you are going to have to play with these settings to get them looking exactly right for your particular document and for whatever style or look you're going for. Um, the main ones you got to mess with here is opacity, which is the darkness of the shadow. Okay, uh, if you want like a really kind of a, 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 I don't know, sort of a graphic sort of look, you could go really dark with it. Um, in my case, I'm, I'm looking for more of a realistic look, so I'm going to keep the opacity about like that. Uh, the distance here is how far away the shadow is from the layer. Uh, if you put it really high, it tends to make it look like the, uh, the uh, layer is actually floating above the underlying layer, I don't want that. I'm not having pizza in space. My distance needs to be pretty small like that. Uh, so as you can already see, it, that looks pretty good. It really does make that uh, pepperoni look a little bit more three-dimensional. Um, the next step, though, is going to really help, and this is bevel and emboss. So bevel and emboss is what really gives it that 3D look, and all it's doing is uh, simulating the look that there's a light shining from the same direction as your drop shadow, light and it puts a highlight on one side and a shadow on the other side um, so settings for this again are not going to be perfect on the first try you're gonna excuse me uh, you're gonna have to uh, play with these settings a little bit to get them exactly the way that you want um, for the pepperoni look I want to uh, turn the soften setting all the way down um, and uh, I'm gonna turn the depth up and down to get exactly the look that I want. In this case, I'm going to keep the depth pretty high, something like that. Um, but right now, the size here is not working for me. So the depth controls the contrast of the uh, effect, how dark and how light the shadow is, essentially. Uh, it controls the edge appearance of it. Um, the size determines how large or small that bevel actually is. So for a pepperoni look, uh, I'm going to keep it pretty darn small because the pepperoni is pretty thin. Um, if you like, you can also play with the technique setting here. Um, it alters the appearance of the edge of the bevel. Uh, I actually like the look of the chisel um, bevel setting when using the, uh, or when, when creating the pepperoni. Uh, and I'm going to set my size here to four, uh, my depth up pretty much all the way up. Actually, it's just all the way up. Uh, and that's it. Um, if you're not crazy about the look, you can play with the uh, shading um, angle here, and by simply clicking around the circle, it changes the direction that that light is shining from. Let's say I want a uh, pretty graphic sort of look. Um, you could make that uh, angle very extreme so that the light is shining from just you know a vertical direction or whatever. Um, I'm going to go kind of a 
angle like that. And there you have it. So now I've got a, a 3D looking um, pepperoni. So the last step is to apply the texture overlay. Um, you want to make sure you actually don't click the texture box, but you want to actually use this one that says pattern overlay. So pattern overlay is going to overlay that entire layer with a pattern. The default pattern looks like that. Um, and here is what you're going to see. Okay, So these are your built-in patterns that are in there originally. Uh, the main settings here is opacity, which is just how um, you know, light or dark the texture shows up or how transparent it is. Uh, scale changes the size of the texture. So if you make the scale lower, it shrinks down the texture and it, or I should say pattern rather than texture. If you make the scale smaller, shrinks down the size of the pattern, make the scale bigger and it expands that pattern larger. Okay. Um, and then the blending mode. The blending mode, the default is set to normal. Um, this covers up the colors of your original picture, so we don't want to use normal. We're probably going to be end up using one of these options down here. Overlay, soft light, hard light, vivid light. One of those tends to be best. Uh, I'm going to set it on overlay right now, and you can see the color of the pepperoni shows through now. Um, as far as the pattern goes, the default one is this diagonal line. Obviously, that doesn't work for pepperoni. Um, in the standard default patterns here, you're going to see um, a, a variety of um, different patterns, but none of them really work particularly well for pepperoni. Uh, that's not too bad, um, and this one's not too bad actually, but there are some better choices. So if I, uh, to access these patterns, you hit this little arrow, and then right next to it, this little gear, and that opens up all the different options for patterns. Um, by the default, you're only going to have these, uh, whatever it is, you know, eight or nine patterns. I guess it's nine, ten, whatever. Um, hit this little gear, and there's a whole bunch of additional patterns that open up. So I'm going to use the rock patterns. Sounds weird, but believe it or not, uh, rock patterns work really well for this uh, pizza exercise. Um, once you uh, choose a pattern, it's going to say replace current patterns, uh, OK, or append. Um, if you press OK, it'll erase all these other patterns. I don't want to do that. I'm going to click Append, and it will add them to the end. Um, so these are different pictures of, let me turn the scale down a little bit so you can see a little better. These are literally just pictures of rocks, um, or in some cases, I think this one is like a, a countertop or something like that. And it's really bizarre, but uh, something really important to, to know when doing Photoshop is you don't always get exactly the effect that you think. Uh, in other words, I can use a rock texture or pattern to create the look that this is actually pepperoni. And it's really weird, but once you have the color and once it's in the correct context, it looks just like pepperoni. You would never know that that was just a rock um, or a stone uh, countertop. Um, so again, you're going to want to play with the opacity. You're going to want to play with the scale to get just the exact look that you want. And I'd say that looks pretty good right there. Uh, and you're going to also want to play with the blending mode. So the one that I normally use is overlay. Um, if you want a softer effect, you can choose soft light. A stronger effect, you can choose hard light. Um, and uh, a more vivid color experience, and you can choose vivid light. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to stick with overlay, and that looks pretty good to me. Done. Pepperoni. Uh, for the cheese layer, I'm going to do exactly the same thing, but the settings are going to be just a little bit different. So um, again, drop shadow, same, same. Uh, I'm going to turn up the distance just a little bit, so it makes it a little, look a little bit more three-dimensional. Zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole thing. Um, so if I turn that distance up, uh, you might also want to adjust the size setting, and that kind of changes the uh, sharpness of the edge of the shadow. So, whoops. So, here the size is turned up a little bit, and it's a really soft edge. If I turn the size down, it's sharper. In this case, I want it to be a little bit blurry, like that. Um, opacity is how light or dark it is. Again, I just want a slight hint of a shadow, you know. Cheese doesn't cast that much of a shadow. There you go. Um, Bevel and emboss. Uh, same idea. Now, 
the I don't think the chisel look works at all on the cheese layer. So in this case, I'm going to set this to smooth as opposed to chisel. Um, the size I'm going to turn up just a little bit. The cheese is a little bit thicker, I think, than the pepperoni. So there you have it. Um, and I'm going to also turn up this soften setting so that you get a nice sort of round edge and that looks like melted cheese. Um, there you have it. Um, so I have a drop shadow, I have bevel and emboss, and I'm going to also do the pattern overlay. Uh, in this case, the pattern that I like to use for my cheese pattern is one of the default textures, and it's this one. Um, I don't know what the heck that layer is supposed to look like, but I find it works really well for the look of uh, melted mozzarella cheese on a pizza. Uh, there you have it. Um, again, the blending mode, totally up to you. Pick one that you like. Vivid Light might actually work really well for this. It really does look quite a bit like... Uh, you know, melty, greasy pizza cheese. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with that. Uh, play with the scale and the opacity to get the look that you want. Um, I'm gonna turn off these two layers just so you can see my sauce layer here really nicely and clearly. Double click my layer. Here's my layer style. Uh, same, same uh, approach here. Drop shadow, bevel and emboss. Uh, you'll notice that it saved the setting from my previous one, so it's using the same setting that I used for the cheese earlier, and uh, pattern overlay. Uh, that is not a great pattern, I don't think, for a um, for a tomato sauce, so I'm going to choose a different pattern. Uh, I actually do like the rock patterns in this case. Uh, this one's pretty good if you're going for like a, a really chunky kind of tomato look. Um, but uh, I think I'm going to actually, let's see, I'm going to go with this one. I think it's actually the same one. I, whoops, didn't mean to do that. Uh, it's actually the same one I used for the pepperoni, uh, but with a different scale setting. Um, if you turn it too low, you'll notice some weird repeating patterns. You want to really avoid that. We don't see that in the real world. So you want to get that scale just right so that you lose that repeating pattern look, uh, but you still get a sufficient looking texture. I think that looks remarkably like um, tomato sauce on pizza. It's bizarre to me how, how well that works, uh, but there you have it. Um, for the crust, again, the drop shadow. Uh, this is going to be the biggest shadow, so I'm going to put the distance quite a bit higher and I'm going to turn the size up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to also make the shadow a little bit darker to really give it that 3D look. Um, bevel and emboss, uh, you are going to have to adjust the size to um, essentially control what kind of pizza you're making, how thick you want your crust to be. You can make a very, very thin style like that uh, or you can actually make a thicker crust uh, like that. I will not comment here on your choice of pizza crust style. Um, and uh, there you have it. So that looks like a pretty pretty realistic 3D effect on that crust. Um, I'm going to make my drop shadow just a little bit darker like that. Uh, lastly, the pattern overlay. Um, for pizza crust, uh, I'm going to go back to the default textures. Uh, one of these top ones up here should work fine. Um, Obviously, that blending mode looks horrible. How about overlay? Not too bad. Soft light. That looks better. Um, adjust the opacity exactly how you want. Adjust the scale to get just the look that you want. For a pizza crust, I'm just kind of looking for a slightly rough, um, <clears throat> you know, doughy kind of texture. I don't know. Uh, play with the patterns. Find one that you like. And there you have it. Guess what, guys? That's it. There's your pizza. Enjoy.